and welcome to Tokyo Gamers appear your Manchester United against West Ham United quite past seven kickoff on Sunday evening. As always, Charlie, can I get your thoughts on our opponent, Man United? Yeah, they're on a decent run of form. They're unbeaten in quite a while. Um, a lot of draws in there, but they're sort of turning into a bit of one of a bit of a stubborn side where they're, they're just going to keep fighting, they're going to keep biting. A lot of the times their draws are even nil-nils, but they're just going to keep grinding them out. Um, and they're having a really good season, a season I think that most people would have been surprised by. I thought they were building something. You look at people like Bruno Fernandes and you're like, okay, they're starting to put the pieces in place. Rashford is starting to really fill up, fulfill his potential. People like Greenwood, like they, they've got the pieces there, but I thought it was probably we're looking at next season when they start to challenge for for higher places than fourth. But, I mean, they're probably... The season doesn't lie. I think they have probably been the second best team in the country this season for a reason. I, I think they're I think they a decent side and I think it's going to be a, a tough challenge this weekend. Yeah, I think they've done all right this season as well. You know, they're still in the Europa League as we speak. They've got a tough fixture away to AC Milan to to do to, to get through. They're still in the FA Cup, you know, up against the Leicester City side in the next round who's currently got a lot of injuries and their, their sort of top four aspirations are under threat now. So Ollie might find himself getting a little bit of an advantage in that game in terms of the lineups. I think they need one of those trophies for it to be considered successful. I think they need to get something. Um, is the FA Cup enough? Probably not, but if you told a non-Man United fan at the start of the season, you'll win the FA Cup and you'll finish second in the penalty, I think we'd say that's a good season for Man United because it means they've broken Man City and Liverpool. It means they've finished above one of them. Mm. They are going to finish above Liverpool, but I'd put that down to the fall of Liverpool rather than the climb of Man United. And this is still a long, long way from the Man United of old. They're still, they've still got a lot to do. When I look at their team, I think half their team's good enough to challenge for the title. I think the other half aren't. I think the other half are sort of just, they're, they're just not good enough. When I say challenge for the title, it means mm. I don't even, I think some of those players in there aren't, aren't even good enough to play for a Champions League team, to be honest with you. I think you need some players like that. You know, over the years, Man United always had that couple of players that work hard. They perhaps don't have the ability of, of others, but they're important. You know, likes of Dan and Fletcher. But you yeah. only need one or two of those. I think they've almost got five or six of those at the minute. And I think that's their problem. They need to upgrade those players. But what about the manager? What about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Is he doing a good enough job? Is he a good enough manager for Man United, in your opinion? Uh, Good enough for where Man United are now, yes. Like I don't, I don't look at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think he's a title-winning manager. But then again, I don't know if I can ever look at someone and go, he's a title-winning manager until he actually does the wins the title. It was when he came in, I understood the sort of the negative reaction around it because obviously, like everyone knows him from his time at Cardiff. I looked at his time at Cardiff, thought that was a sinking ship, and tended to try and give him the benefit of the doubt because he'd done really well with Mould. And I was like, Do you know what? Is he, is he only there because he is a former Man United player? Yes. But he proved himself when he was caretaker and he has sort of has time to take over. I think he's slowly moulding something there. Uh, to pardon the, I guess, the word play by accident. I think he's slowly moulding something in a team where you're... They play a little bit like Man United used to under Ferguson with lots of wing play, lots of counter-attacking, fast-playing football. Um, and to be honest, at times I have seen him change up formations, change up tactics a bit to suit the opposition. He's not hes not afraid to do that. Out of that sort of crop of former players managing their sides, I mean, Steven Gerrard's just done something with Rangers, but ignoring that, I think he's probably the best one around right now. Um, I don't think he's a title-winning manager just yet, but, I mean, Man United can invest in him and try and see if he can get to that level over the next couple of seasons. And I think that's probably what Man United as a club need to be doing anyways, investing and trying to get to a title winning side in the next couple of years. So right man for the right time for the right club, I think, but um, not title winning just yet. Uh, I think he's a good manager. I think he's definitely good. I don't think he's a poor manager. Is he good enough for Man United? Mm. I'm not sure. I think he needs to develop a little bit more before he's at a club like mm. that. But Man United probably needs someone a little bit more ready a lot something that can come in and make a difference like that but they tried that they tried that with Van Al, they tried it with uh, Jose Mourinho and it, neither of them worked out so they've gone down this route which is okay we'll give this manager time we'll give him patience and he's made progress he's made progress slowly but surely and Man United fans would like it to be a little bit quicker as a club of Man United size it should probably be a bit quicker but it isn't and I think the problem is you know compared to years gone by you know Man City are 
a top top club now they never used to be that good Liverpool were until this season they've fallen away a little bit but the, so the, the gap between Man United and the other clubs is still narrow it's still really narrow they've got Leicester on their tail Chelsea on their tail and it is a difficult difficult gig for them there. I think he is a good manager I think he deserves more time at Man United but I think he needs I think he deserves backing I think they need to really spend this summer and really upgrade some players you know last summer they just didn't do a good enough job um they got in van der Beek, who's a really good player at Ajax, but clearly Ollie didn't want him. He's not playing him at all. And when he does play him half the time, it's not the way that he played at Ajax. Um, yeah. You know, he'd been sort of wanting a winger all this time, and we know he wanted Sancho, didn't get Sancho. We got someone else who's completely different and plays in a different um, position. So I think the board let him down. And until he's sufficiently backed in the market, I don't think you can truly judge him. So what he's got at his disposal, I think he's doing a good job. Not an amazing one, not a bad one. He's just doing good. How far away are they from challenging for the title next season, Charlie? Because that's ultimately what they want to be doing. That's where Man United want to be. It's it's what you're saying. It's when Ferguson used to be in charge, he had that idea of like buying one play, he buy two players, two players in the summer, one for now, one for next season, sort of thing. They keep buying players for next season, and that's great and all, because I like some of the players they're bringing in. I like that philosophy of investing in younger players who, for the future, I like all that. But they are missing those key star men. Bruno Fernandez was a great example of that. You bring him in, you put him in, he does his thing instantaneously. He 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 makes you a better side, like like Jesse Lingard with us, but on a higher level, right? They need a couple of those. That's what they're missing for me. Just a couple more of those players. If they get them over the summer, I don't think they're going to challenge for the title next season. But you're going to start to see a side where you're going, actually, they're close to being title challengers at this point. So probably two seasons for me, but it would have to be two seasons where they 100% nail the transfer market. Because it's, 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 and it's, their situation is the same as ours. What you always say, if you're not stepping forward, you're falling behind. If they're not tapping up, Chelsea, Arsenal, all of these teams, right, who are usually in the top six, are all going to step one step closer to them. If they're ahead of them now, they'll step one step closer to them and all of a sudden they lose that advantage. So it has to be two seasons for me of, of excellent transfer windows. Then they can truly challenge for the title. But until then, yeah. I, I think they need about three, maybe four top, top players. And I think a centre-back is mm. probably a centre midfielder. And then they need to start the short the striker situation because Cavani's good, he's just a bit old. Or Martial's just mm. not quite. He's just not quite good enough, and I think that's what I guess the difference between them and other teams are. But not the teams around him, funny enough. You know, Liverpool don't have an outstanding number nine. Uh, Man City don't play with a number nine at the minute. Um, Jesus and Aguero ain't been on it, but they they're still scoring. But it's almost like when Man United struggle up front, they struggle all together and to rely too much on Bruno Fernandez's penalties, if you like. And I'm not saying I don't think there's a conspiracy or anything. I think they do get penalties that are genuine penalties. There's one or two suspect ones but I've also seen them not given penalties that should have been penalties as well so it sort of swings around about a little bit but I think they need a top top striker up front you know they've always had top strikers Van Persie even when they had his Latin but to be fair his Latin was very good for Man United but they've always had someone like Anisteroy Van Persie and stuff. they've always had a top striker up there that gets them 20 goals a season and stuff they're lacking that at the minute. I know Rashford's scoring, and I know he's had a decent season, but I think that's as good as it got for Rashford. I think he's been decent. I've seen him play some stinkers this season as well, and there's too much inconsistencies in that team. I think Rashford can be world-class one week and poor the next. Martial, the same. There's too much inconsistency. They've got the ability. They just don't do it week in, week out. Um, I think they're a little bit away from Man City right now, but I do think they could solve a lot of it in the transfer market if they were ambitious. And efficient. Um, the players you admire. The players you admire from Man United. Just two or three, please. Don't go through the whole team. <laughs> All right. I mean, maybe I wouldn't like the whole team. I do. I do quite like Man United. Um, I, Marcus Rashford is the obvious one. Um, like you say, I do think he's inconsistent, but um, he's just a baller. Like he's just he's so. If he could find, and I think actually his inconsistencies aren't helped by standing next to someone who's also inconsistent. If he was next to a Van Persie who's going to do it week in, week out, or everyone else, it might help him a little bit and not be as exposed when those inconsistencies are shown. But I really like him as a footballer. I think he's got everything, and as a person, but as a footballer specifically, I really like him. Um, Bruno Fernandes is obvious. I, I don't think anyone wouldn't mention Bruno Fernandes. Let's be real. Um, who else do I like? Do you know what? I'm going to say this, and this isn't just because you, so ignore this for a second because you're going to get hype. I really like Scott McTominay. Um, I always have liked Scott McTominay. I think, he, all right, calm down, calm down, calm down. Um, no, I just think he's really, I just think he's a really good player. I think he's, he's one of those people, um, 
he just he'll go under the radar a little bit because but he's got a bit of everything he really is genuinely an all-round midfielder he can do the defensive side he can do the attacking side he's running back and forth all the time he's just really capable and i think they've got a player there who if they can continue to grow could really be a linchpin in that side for a long long time um not just because he's a man united youth player he's actually got that what it takes to make it at that level, I think. Um, not to, but don't, but don't get too excited. You know, just can't. I, th- I think in Tommy is class as well. Um, I'll, I'll start with Maguire. I think Maguire is a top centre back. I think yeah. he gets far too much criticisms. That I guess is just what comes when you are the captain of Manchester United and you've captained England before mm. and you're sort of England's main centre back. You are going to be in the public eye, the media. They can be a bit bully. They can. The media do like to pick on one or two players. I think Maguire is one of those players. I think he's also one of these players that get a lot of traction on social media when he messes up, just like Jordan Pickford does. Pickford can make the same mistake as Mendy of Chelsea, and the Pickford mistake will be a lot more seen, recognised, and spoken about. Whereas, you know, I think if Maguire done the same error as a other centre back in the Premier League I think we would see and hear a lot more about Harry Maguire's but I think he's a top top centre back I really do think he's a, a the problem is he's a slow centre back and Lundelof's also relatively slow I think if they can get a quicker centre back next to Maguire I think he, he would become not world class but the next level down he would go into that bracket of elite centre backs I don't think he's far away I think he's really really good I think Luke Shaw's been the best left back in the league this season um, I think he sort of deserves to be England's left back for the Euros. Him, him and Maguire have got that partnership on the left side of defence too. Would make sense. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, he's had some big injuries, Luke Shaw, but he's always looked a little bit. He's just a chunky boy, so he always looks overweight, doesn't he? Because um, he, yeah. he's a chunky monkey. But I think this season, I, I think he's been fantastic. I think um, getting forward for Man United, I think he's almost like a winger at times when he goes forward with him. His crossing superb. Mm. Um, I think. Bar Fernandez, he'd probably be my Man United player of the year if there was such a thing. I think he's been that good. Anyway, let's stop talking about Man United. We're going to move on to West Ham. The team news is as you were, Masmak, who's not back, Obana's not back, Yarmolenko's not back. Well, to be fair, we might have Fredericks back, we're unsure. Um, but no, Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard can't play because obviously Man United is his parent club. So we've got one force change upon us from the win against Leeds United. But Charlie, how would you like to see us set up for this game? Back four like we did against Leeds, or would you like to see us convert to a back five for this one? I'm, I'm quite torn, because for me, usually when I watch football, when I watch West Ham, I'm like, I'm all about the performance. Results will come if the performances are there, is my opinion. So as long as we're hitting performances, I'm not really fussed. This weekend, I can't lie, I'm kind of all about the result. I'm kind of all about the result. I just want to see us get those three points. I'm kind of a little bit desperate for it. And because of that, usually I would say, out of the back, just back four, Let's really go to it. Let's try step to them. Let's find, fight them in the middle of the ring. Let's go for it. But that that sort of, I want the points this weekend, is sort of making me think probably a back five is the best way to go. Um, I think if we play a back five, we will contain Man United. Um, as good as they are, we've seen Manchester City step to us. They could, they, but they, they managed to do it, but it was with a lot of, with a he- with a heavy hand, they could. It wasn't easy for them, and I don't think Manchester United are anywhere near as good. I think I would probably go for a back five against this, from, against my better judgment, um, because I just I really want to win, Gio. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. Also, when we played them in the FA Cup, we started the game with the back four, and I thought we were poor. I thought Man United were the better team. And then we switched mm-hmm. it up at half time. Uh, you know, Ben Johnson went on at left wing back and stuff. I thought we were fantastic in the second half. Old Trafford in the in the mm-hmm. cup game. Now I'm aware that both teams were slightly rotated and stuff, so perhaps in a fair reflection. But we played Man City with a back five a couple of weeks ago, and again I thought we were very unlucky to lose that game. I thought we played very well. I think this is the formation that will suit this game. Also, we've got to take into consideration we are missing Jesse Lingard, so you've got to sort of wonder. Yeah, true playing forward at the back how much do we rely on Jesse Lingard in this formation and I would say quite a bit really going forward could we do the Leeds' team and put Jared Bowen in for Jesse Lingard would it work I'm not sure it would I'm not, I wouldn't be that confident um, I'd be a bit nervous about it so for that I would go to back five or back three whatever you want to call it. I think the personnel sort of picks itself though um, would you agree that's Diop, Dawson, Creswell at the back with Sufal and Johnson left wing back or would you change it no, nah, I, I think it's obvious. I think it's easy. Why why change a winning formula in that kind of context? You know, they're doing bits. And how would you like to see us? We've always got Vice and Sue check in the middle. How would you like to see the other three line up and who would they be? Um, 
Antonio, as long as he's not dead, Mick Antonio up front, obviously. Um, that's about as easy as it gets. I mean, picking our team's quite easy at the moment because there's so many obvious options that it's not too deep. Um, and then probably, uh, given the opposition, probably for Nows and Bowen um, on either side. I for the work rate for the defensive work rate, I think they both know what they're doing. I think when we had that early run in the season where we were going to big teams and getting results and getting performances, that was the thing. And I think there's a reason why. Um, Part of me wants to see Saeed Ben Rama get in. Obviously, I I like Saeed Ben Rama. I think he brings something different, something that the rest of our wide players don't really do. Um, but I think given the given the team, I would probably start with Bowen and Fournals and then bring Ben Rama on seventy minutes in or sixty minutes in or something. Like that. I would do the exact same eleven as you. Um, I would do it slightly yeah. different. I think I'd have Fournals in the position he's played the last few weeks in that sort of central attacking midfielder role I think I'd just put Bowen up front mm-hmm. with Antonio to be honest with you um, okay. I think I'd go with that I think they worked well together I, I'm aware there was a other player in the team when we, we played someone at home and there was a, we had a front three of Lingard Bowen and Lanzini at the start. Sheffield United plays Sheffield United. I thought Bowen worked really well with the sort of that sort of attack and release away from the right hand side of midfield a little bit. I'd put him up there. Mm-hmm. He would have to help out because well, obviously Luke Shaw plays out on the left, so we, Bowen would have to look after him. And it's a bit harsh on Saeed Ben Rama. I'm a bit like yourself. I almost feel like I want to put Ben Rama in because I thought he was actually our biggest threat going forward against Leeds United on the ball. I thought he mm-hmm. actually was one that could cover the ground and stuff. But this is about picking the right team. You put their formation and you pick the right players for that formation. And the way I'd like to see us play, there isn't a position for Saeed Ben Ram unless he goes up front with Antonio. Um, so, unfortunately, but like you said, you'd have him on the bench and be an excellent option to have. Um, a big test for us this weekend, Charlie. It is, yeah. It's a huge test. Um, and I think we're up to it. I really genuinely do. Um, that Manchester City result for us, not for them. Um, has given me sort of all the confidence in the world to say, all right, come on in, let's go, bring it. You're, you're not going to beat us down. You're not going to. Like, it took City, like, the Kevin, uh, the first goal, the Ruben Diaz goal. Was it Diaz or yeah, Jones? Yeah, Stones? it was Diaz. Diaz. Not going to happen again. Like, let's be real. The only time they managed to score is when they overloaded us by putting every single player in the box. That was the one time it happened. They left two centre-backs up from, it was wild, right? Outside of that against City, I felt like we had it. I felt like we had it. And that's given me all the confidence in the world. Going up against Man United, Leeds, whoever it might be. I just think, okay, step to us. See what happens. My concerns are at the other end of the field. I don't think we're... I still don't think we're... How do I word it? We're not the finished article up front, is what I'll say. We're, we're the finished article in defence to an extent, I think. There's obviously pieces you maybe would improve and pieces you move around. Maybe you wouldn't be paying Johnson at left wing back if you didn't have to and stuff. But... When you see the shape, when you see the performances, you're like, we have that sorted, we don't have that worried. Up front, I still feel like there's something to go. Some games we look brilliant, some games we look unbeatable when we do that, some games we don't. That's my concern in this game going into it. I think that, can we pull out the performances up front to get the goals against Man United to get a win? I think we do, but it's going to be a big, big challenge because they are they are no slouches. Yeah, I think this is a massive test for us going into this weekend because... You know, we're going to the, we're fifth at the minute. That may change prior to kick off at Old Trafford. Um, and I, th- I almost feel like we need to get something. I feel there's a bit of pressure on us actually um, to get something. Normally, this fixture years gone by, it wouldn't bother us that much. It, uh, we call it a free hit sometimes. I don't think it's a free hit anymore. In all honesty, I think Man City away was a little bit because of the opposition. And I just don't think Man United's got the same fear factor. And that's a bit harsh, Man. You could have just defeated Man City. But we context is everything, and this Man United are missing a lot of players: Pogba, Van de Beek, Juan Mata, um, Cavani looks like he's out, Rashford looks like he's out, De Gea's out. Okay, they've got an adequate replacement in Dean Henderson, but it's a lot of players are missing. I think Martial might be missing as well. I thought he was available, but someone said it earlier that Martial looks like he's not playing on um, Sunday. That's a lot of players for them to be missing. This gives us a really good opportunity. They've also played European football on Thursday. And Stacey Milan, we've had our feet up watching the game. Um, I think there's a lot of pluses for this, but what that does, while it gives me a bit of optimism and increases the chances of us getting something, it also increases the pressure, I think, upon us, which is we're going into this game as one of the form teams in the Premier League, a, a genuine Champions League contender. 
And if you want to finish in Champions League places, you've got to go to places like Old Trafford to get something. You've got to go to it. Yeah. Because you can probably take our, our results, Everton's results, and Leicester's results, and they'll be very compatible for a lot of fixtures. A lot of us will, will get six points against Sheffield United. We'll get six points against Fulham, stuff like that. But mm. actually, when it comes down to it, sometimes it's the games against Man United, it's the games against Chelsea, it's the games against Man City and Liverpool. That actually, whoever gets the most points in that little cluster will finish yep. on top of each other. And I think we need to get... I do feel we need to get some... I think a draw is probably enough. I think a draw keeps us happy going going into the Arsenal game next week. We might drop a league position or something. But we know we've just played a very difficult fixture, just like Man City. Um, played a, a tough, tough game. Lost a little bit of the ground, but we've got easier fixtures on the horizon. And I think this is one of those circumstances. If we get a point, I will feel confident that we're still in the Champions League race. If we lose, I think... It puts a little bit of pressure on us in the other games against Chelsea, Leicester in particular. Those two games, you'll be looking at them thinking, we probably need to win one of these to make up for it. We probably need to beat one of those two teams. But as it stands, out of those three games, I realise we've got Arsenal in the middle of all this, but I look at Arsenal differently to the other three. Uh, the league table suggests why. Um, I think we probably need five points against Man United, Leicester and Chelsea. And it's difficult, but you've, that's if you want Champions League football, that's the demand. You can't be dropping most your point you've got to be picking points 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 up and I think at Old Trafford I think there's a lot of pressure are you feeling confident Charlie? I sort of am dangerous I am. dangerous I know I'm not usually you're like not either, that's I'm why I got you on point. that's why I got you on because I'm feeling quite optimistic I thought I'd get someone that would be predicting a loss on you've surprised me here I, it, it, I, since that City performance, I've really gained a lot of confidence, like a lot of confidence, because I was because I watched that and it was that thing. I think everyone said it after that game. The world was pride. Everyone was like, Do you know, what? I'm 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 proud of that performance. We we took it to the best team in Europe right now, and we really made them work for it. It wasn't a case of they walked all over us. You know, I, I compare. And again, you know, I'm not a huge fan of David Moyes either, but I compare hit the performance under David Moyes to the one where we had Sam Allardyce in charge and we got wiped, they wiped the floor of us. A worse City team beat us 9-0 in aggregate in the League Cup where we've gone up to Manchester City and we've, we've made it really difficult for them. I have all the confidence in the world right now, which is a dangerous thing and it's not like me. But I look at this Man United team and I think, look, it's difficult. They're very good, but I think we can hold them out. And when you can hold them off from scoring then you always have a chance. You always have a chance. So I am. I'm I'm strangely confident, Jigga. Pride before a fall, I think they call it. Pride before well, a fall. I'm going to join you in that, my friend, because I'm confident. Too. Well, maybe not so much confident in the game. I'm confident in this team. I'm confident in this manager. Yeah. Um, and you know, I did a video a couple of days ago about the mentality of this squad, and that's what gives me confidence, actually, that they are going to go there. They're not going to have that fear factor in. You know, last week David Moyes said that he was disappointed. He told the lads we were disappointed to be out of the Champions League places. We didn't even play the game. The only reason we're out of the Champions League places is because Everton and Chelsea played their games in hand. That's all. But the fact is, while it might sound a little bit daft to be disappointed we dropped out of the top four when you, you literally can't do anything about it, it does sum up the mentality now. Enough. You can go back to a month ago, six weeks ago, actually. We were sort of batting away questions about European European food. Oh, well, you know, listen. There's time for European football. We're happy with where we are. Let's just see where we are in a few. We were batting away. We would not entertain a conversation about European football being our ambition. Actually, that's changed in the last couple of weeks. Jared Bowen spoke about it. Declan Rice has been on Talk Sports saying he wants Champions League football. The managers come out saying we want Champions League football. And it's almost like they've almost decided, listen, I am perfectly aware why Moyes and that's been batting away European football stuff six weeks ago. They would have, Behind closed doors, they've been saying, let's get Champions League football. Of course they would have been. But there's a big difference between doing it publicly. You know, Leicester had done it. Ranieri done it all the time. The year they won the title, he would not talk about winning the title. He would always, always, always just pow, na 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 na. But the players have come out said and since. No, no. Every week the manager was telling us we are winning the title. He was banging on about it all the time. And it'll be the same at West Ham right now. They'll be going to Old Trafford knowing they've got to get something. But it's different because. We've gone to Old Trafford in the past with a mentality of we can't lose this game. We need a point to stay in the league. We almost have to like lose 1-0 or 2-0, and that'll do, because we protect our goals so we can stay in the league. We're going there with a completely different mentality, which is like, we need to win this. We need a win. We want Champions League. We've got to get three points. And I think Man United fans will be confident as well. They've just beaten Man City 2-0 last week. They'll, they'll be thinking, listen, if they've got this far, they'll be thinking, why are you too confident after a defeat? We beat them. 
But it's, it's the whole manner of it. You know, that Manchester game, they deserved the win, man. You, but they scored after about two minutes. It changes the whole, the whole mm. game changes after that. You can sit back and say what you're going to do about it. You can't do that nil nil for 90 minutes. It's different. Um, so I'm just confident in this team. I'm confident in the mentality of this team. And honestly, Charlie, I'm really looking forward to Sunday night's game, actually. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, one thing that's changed with me personally between now and a couple of months ago is sort of the confidence in the team sheet. Before, I, even when we were doing well, I used to think, oh, I hope he does this, I hope he does that, I hope he doesn't play noble, harsh as it is. You know, he did it against Brighton and across Christmas. I thought, please don't do that again. I don't have that in worries anymore. Now the lineups are going to come out. I'm like, eh, I'm sure he's done the right thing. And you look at it and you read it and you think, yeah, I, I think he has done the right thing. I can understand why he's done that. I think he's done it right. And I've got confidence he's got the team sheet will be right on Sunday. I've got I've got confidence that we'll, we'll have the right attitude, right application. Then it comes down to the players turning up and a little bit of luck. You need a bit of luck. And there's nothing wrong with relying on that because every team needs it. Um, and hopefully we get some of it on um, Sunday. Can I get your final words on the game, Charlie? With a score prediction. You can. Um, I had this conversation with um, with James Hever the other night about the idea of would you take a point against Manchester United? And obviously you can't knock the point, respect the point on that. But honestly, I feel like we've got to go for him. I feel like we've got to take it to him. I feel like we've got to win this game. Like... If we were a different side, if we weren't West Ham United in this position, say we were Chelsea, Liverpool, any of those, they would look at Man United and go, "We have to win. We we should be. We got to take. We got to win this game, and we should have that mentality as well. We need to go into this game not looking not to lose, but looking to actually genuinely win. And I think we have it in us. I really genuinely do. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Like Manchester United are one of those teams at the moment where they either score a lot of goals or they don't score a goal. Um, to an extent we're not, it's certainly not going to be a 9-0 game I think we're going to keep them out and I'm kind of confident that we're going to score it's it's not the most exciting thing in the world but Jesus Christ if this happens I will be very happy I'm saying 1-0 West Ham I'm saying we're doing it I'm saying we're, ta- I'm saying we're keeping them out I'm saying we're winning I'm saying Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to be a little bit miffed David Moyes at the wheel I know. I've, I hate myself so much. I can't right believe <laughs> this. I can't believe it. Charlie Walsh predicting a win away to a Sky Sports top six club. Wow. I never thought I'd see the day. Never thought I'd see it. Blimey. I don't... I, I, I just... I don't know what it is, man. It's... it's The confidence is there. And I think it's in the players. I My one concern about it, sometimes, the couple, last couple of games, we've had a couple of times where we've looked a bit shaky... Almost like the comp, almost like the pressure has got to us a bit. The beginning of Leeds was like that, and that's a bit of my concern. If Oli Gunnar Solskjaer watched that Leeds game, he'll just go, right, you sprint at them from the beginning. First 10 minutes, first 15 minutes, you make their life a living hell because we crumbled under that. The defence was in a block like this. There was no organisation. It was all over the shop. That's a little bit of my concern here, but I just think we can hold them out. I think that's the only time we've looked really out at sixes and sevens in the last month or something like I think we've got I, I think we've got this year I think we've got I, this I, I think the point would I be happy with the point yeah I would okay I think I, if we draw on Sunday it depends on how the game goes mm-hmm. and stuff but let's just assume we play well and we get a point and it's a deserved point and we haven't been robbed or anything then I'll be happy with it however would I take a point now no I think that's the big difference I'd be happy with that point however sure. Right now, you offered it two minutes. And no, no, no. I'm going to gamble that point and try and get all three, actually, because I think it is worth that. I do think that is somewhere we can go and get three points. And just like Man United fans will be confident that they can beat us on Sunday. And so they should be. They're above us in the league. They're in decent nick. They've just beat Man City. They should be confident. We should be confident. And hopefully it'll give us a decent game. But I don't think it... I'm a bit like you. I don't think it will be a decent game. I think it's going to be a game of chess on Sunday. I think it'll be two sides... Probably with a must not lose mentality. Actually, I think both sides might be thinking mm, that team's dangerous. Be a bit cautious, and I think we could almost see what the West Brom and um, Newcastle played last weekend. And for the first forty-five minutes, neither side wanted to attack. Both sides were like, "Oh, we can't lose this." You know, two players forward at all times. And that's it. You know, no more than two players across the halfway line. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of that from us because. Yeah. And for Man United, actually, because a point would probably do Man United just to stay in that top four and keep us away a little bit. Um, and a point would probably do us in the long run if we can go on and beat the teams like Southampton that we've got. 
<laughs> so I don't. I, I think it might be a cautious game. Man United have conceded a few goals from set pieces recently as well, which gives me a little bit of hope because against Leeds, our set pieces were bang on point a lot of the time as well. Yeah, um, so I'm looking forward to it. I am going to say I'm going to say Man United one, West Ham one. I'm going to go for one one. I think we'll see a, a low scoring draw on this one. But Charlie, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I mean, and you can come and see if I'm right on the watch along at the weekend, Sunday. Oh, there you go. See that promo? Smooth ass. Yeah, I appreciate that because I was just a way to remind people that's a quarter past seven kickoff, so that means we'll be live at ten past six on mm. the channel on Sunday mm. night with the build up show, the watch along, the review, lots of good content. Lots of content. Lots, lots of content. content. Lots I'll of stop. Content. I'll stop with the good bit. I can't promise good stuff. <laughs> I can promise content, including this PV. If you enjoyed this PV, drop a like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, myself and Charlie, and hopefully Gonzo. We will see you on Sunday night. Catch you in a bit.